So a rather fun little uh, math puzzle plopped out of a conversation I was having with somebody online about the difference between a circle, or a semicircle in this case, and the sine wave. Clearly these are different functions. Uh, I've defined both to be over the range 0 to 2. The circle uh, would be defined by the square root of 2x minus x squared, and the sign has to be scaled in a particular way. The argument has to be scaled so that it goes from 0 to 2 instead of 0 to pi, which in radians, which would be normally the case, or 0 to 180 degrees. So the sine, the sine function I'm using here is sine of pi x over 2. The, um, the uh, semicircle is defined by square root of x minus x squared. So clearly these are different functions. These are, they have different values except at the points 0, 1, and 2 where they happen to intersect. The rest of the time clearly the semicircle is uh, bigger. But I notice that something very interesting occurs if instead of uh, taking this function and doing the square root, if instead you, um, you exponentiate to an arbitrary parameter value a, something interesting occurs because this, uh, these, uh, the circle will basically flatten out and start to look very much like a sine wave. And something very, very interesting occurs in the neighborhood of about a equals, uh, a is about 1.17, in which h of x resembles the sine wave very closely. So the question is, and the math problem is, is there an exact value for the parameter a for which, here's the question right here, is there an exact value for the parameter a for which h of x, that is the uh, algebraic function, is precisely equal to g of x, the sine, the trigonometric function over the domain where x ranges from 0 to 2 inclusive. So in other words, is there an exact value of a for which this kind of squashed circle or exponentiated circle becomes equal to the sine curve. See if you can figure that out on your own, and I'll pause for a few seconds before revealing the answer. Go ahead and pause the movie. Before we begin with the solution, let me say that um, this, uh, I'm looking at a Mathematica notebook and a, and a downloadable Mathematica version as well as CDF version if you want to download Wolfram's Math Player. Uh, there will be a link to that in the uh, description of this movie. Um, just, to, just to cover our tracks, uh, the reason the circle, uh, the function for the circle in that range is defined as square root of 2x minus x squared comes about from basically solving the Pythagorean relationship, um, determining uh, how the vertical component would be defined in terms of the horizontal component. And you get two distinct answers. There's the positive semicircle and the negative semicircle below the x-axis. And we're only interested in the uh, positive case. And then, as I mentioned, we have to do a little fiddling with the sine function to scale it so that the, the domain is 0 to 2 instead of 0 to pi, which would normally be the case. So the answer is no. There is no exact value for A uh, that, um, that you can find that will precisely make the, uh, the algebraic function equal the trigonometric function. Um, an esoteric argument for why that might be would be that there's a distinction between what are known as algebraic numbers and transcendental numbers. When you get into trigonometry, that introduces transcendental numbers that can't be expressed algebraically. If, the si if there were an exact value, then those two sets would be equal. But that's an esoteric argument, uh, not really a proof. Uh, we can, we, I'm not going to supply a rigorous proof. I'm going to just show you kind of graphically that it's not possible. We have here a manipulable, and this is great if you download the CDF file, you'll be able to, and if you install Wolfram CDF player, you'll be able to manipulate this yourself. We have here a little man, manipulable plot, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So we, actually, I'm going to leave it as is for now. Um, we see that this plot starts out with the parameter set to the square root, but we can change it. And, we, and here we can see that squashing occur that I was referring to. And again, as you get close to 1.17, boy, it sure looks, it sure looks like these, uh, these curves line up. But you'll notice there's no way to set this 
so that they're they're precisely equal in that range. And then as you go further, it just gets worse. Um, I could I could have defined this. You know, you can take it up. You can type in any value you want. You could take it up to five or ten or a hundred or whatever you would want to go beyond the range that I defined. Um, but there really is no a precise. If you look at it precisely there's no precise way to do it i'm going to blow up this graph now and you can kind of see this more clearly occurring in the movie i hope if i get it just right so you can kind of see uh let's say we go a little bit low of that range there's kind of a tangent point here where the two curves meet up but then there's a bulge here where the yellow curve is is higher and as we increase slowly and i'm going by increments of one one thousandth here uh, let's actually grab the slider and move it as we as we go up that point of tangency moves but we still always have an area where there's a point below where the it bulges in and a point above you can't really see it where it bulges out it turns out there's no precise precise way to do that this is kind of a clumsy way of doing it, it it's the, the curves are too so close that you might think oh maybe you're just missing the exact value but no, if we if we actually look at the difference between the two plots, here we're taking the sine curve and we're subtracting the algebraic curve. If we look at those, we start out with a square root. We can see that as this as this goes up, when we get in that kind of critical range, here's where that point of tangency occurs. Here's where they're equal. So here it's bulging. Uh, here it's bulging in a bit, and here it's bulging out a bit, where it goes negative. And that point moves, but you can see we always have a bulging in here and a bulging out here. And there's no exact value that we could set in that critical range of about 1.17, where, where, where the two things are equal and incidentally we can make we can kind of show this as a movie let's get this kind of close to that interesting range like at about 1.16 we can make the movie play very slowly well that's actually still pretty fast we can make it go backwards there you go uh, let's make it even slower still and as you play that movie you can kind of see this occurring here we're moving backwards here we're moving forwards so it's kind of cool. Uh, Wolfram uh, CDF player makes it really easy to explore this. And this is not a rigorous proof, but kind of a graphic demonstration showing that there isn't going to be a critical point in that range where all of a sudden both lobes go away. So the esoteric answer still stands, though. If, if there were an exact solution, then the two sets which are distinct, algebraic numbers, which would be generated by algebraic functions such as this, and transcendental numbers, which would be generated by functions like this, those two sets would, would be, uh, wouldn't be distinct, um, and they are distinct. So therefore, that alone says that it, it should be possible to do this. In any case, thanks for paying attention to this problem. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, use math every day. It's a good thing.